us. This is Dr. Advitya Sinha. So, we are continuing on the performance analysis lecture series and today's talk is on social media networking and analysis. So, starting with the basics of what social network is. Social network is basically an um, interconnected structure of the people who are sharing online platform for communicating their own ideas in form of social dialogues. So, the first thing that comes here is discovering the relationship among people that is inherently present in the social network. So, this is the networking part. Once the network is established, we can analyze the flow of information between the related groups or the communities and hence forms the communication platform. With the communication of ideas, many people when started uh, to propagate the idea or a certain concept, then the trend evolves and as a result of that, a worldwide conversation starts evolving with the help of content sharing. Now, social media and networking, it has certain aspects. Owing to its colossal data, large scale information archives are required to store, that is to buffer the media centric information. Intelligent mining is also required because the data that we obtain is in form of very raw, uh, like uh, some, sometimes you will find that some data is missing. So, this raw structure of data needs to be refined for which certain data mining techniques are applied, keeping in mind that social media has its own challenges. Also, uh, once we have the data in, uh, data that is uh, properly refined, we need to make the report and make it visualize in a user friendly manner. So, there are certain visualization tools that are available. Uh, it is also available as a third party application. Also, we can design it according to our wish or according to what the application is required. Then comes the knowledge management system. It makes the system much more like durable because the data that we are collecting is instantaneous and the reports that we are generating in a proper visualized form, it is also for that particular trend or moment or a certain social profile that is available. Now, if we want to make it available for uh, further future analysis, we can use the KMS aspect of social media. There are several networking sites that are available that promotes the social network. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, etc. are some of the instances. Why the social media is considered so powerful? Because its expanse is so great, the outreach is so huge that if we are using or misusing in a manner, then it will affect the mass in a very larger scale. So, we have to create the content in a manner so that it is easily understandable and we had to avoid the fakeness in the content. Now, the types of the social network. We often anonymously like we can call the social network and the uh, say the Twitter network or the Facebook network all as the similar thing. But in reality, social network is a physical world and physical world concept. It means that it has a offline uh, aspect as well. Offline like if uh, there is a in-person uh, group meetings, we can also call it a social network because people are social and forming network to discuss certain issues or criteria. But when this particular type of interaction, the group interaction, it involves certain inter-networking structures, then it becomes an online social network. It means that we need uh, inter-networking as medium of our communication. We need the internet connection for content generation and sharing as well. So, as uh, talking about uh, online social networks, there are two types basically. The first is the social forums. Social forums are those uh, that we normally use for a close group uh, conversation like the WhatsApp conversation or Turnitin. 
Turnitin is uh, normally used among teachers and students for checking plagiarism in their research articles, etc. Or it could be any digital library uh, having geolocation information or some e-commercial uh, portals that are uh, like uh, very specific to a particular company. So uh, they are very dense graph, but are or designed on a very small scale. Hence, they are easy to implement as well as very convenient to track what is happening inside the network. Now, coming to the wider aspect of online social networks is social media. That is Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, etc. These platforms are not only giving you news or sharing your friends' ideas, but also showing an uh, essence of visuals to the viewers. They involve multiple communities for sharing their ideas. Hence, they are large scale and very dynamic real time because instantaneously you can see that the posts arrive, even uh, people would change the trend, some uh, would in involve some kind of say uh, the trends that are very uh, fast evolving due to uh, some kind of say news propagation or it could be something in fashion or in cricket world or anything in entertainment world etc. So this gives an idea of a uh, sparse graph because all people who are in such type of platform say Facebook are not connected to everyone. So there could be some dense communities, there could be some uh, sparse communities, overall giving rise to a sparse social network graph that is online available for usage. This particular uh, phenomena is called power law theorem. So it exhibits the same distribution here. So the advanced network uh, analytics for online social network in this case includes the centrality features like which node is central when such multiple communities are involved with huge number of people uh, participating in the communication. Also, we may come across the diffusion parameters like uh, how far uh, the information that is being propagated or triggered by a particular uh, community has outreached in practical. And obviously, since um, there are multiple communities and also multiple types of devices and sources of data generation are available, security issues becomes a important concern. Now, starting with the online social network, we are focusing on the online part only. We know that what are the significance when we start, uh, we know that it's life live in the sense that the thoughts are being dynamically generated. So it's a real time uh, exposure of the society and the people are interactively providing their ideas either by creating the content or by sharing some existing content, commenting or liking or any other media centric interactions. It's easy to use APIs are there as we know that depending upon whether we are using a window based phone or a Mac based or Android based, we are having different APIs to access these applications, whether it is Facebook, Twitter, Insta or Snapchat. Now comes the accessibility part. Accessibility means that uh, it has to be very, very accessible in terms of uh, understandability of the features of that particular device and uh, the version of the API and also how the idea or the content has to be propagated. This defines or say it actually determines the reachability of uh, the content generated of deciding how the social outreach would be. One significance of uh, this, uh, the entire social network uh, over the online media is due to the abundance of mobile handheld devices. Because uh, these days we can find that the internet option and the mobile devices are very easily available and the applications are also uh, always they are like generating, they are getting upgraded so that people can access them and use them for their transfer of information and sharing of interest. 
In this case, the setup is very insignificant. Once you have the handheld device in your hand, you don't need any other thing. Uh, only the internet part is there and everything is at the tip of your finger. So the maintenance cost can be seen is negligible. So with online social network, with the power of online media and the electronic technological innovation, we can say that it's very easy with the online social network to discover people having common interest so that they can get connected and also can provide their feedback on ideas or on the content that is being propagated across. The advancements in social network. To check out the trends on social network that are there recently these days, we can see that social network is basically very structural and statistical. Since it's structural, we can organize it or classify it cluster it or rank the document part in such a manner which can be classified uh, say for example maybe as critical information or as evolving trend etc. Since we have the information in a structured manner we can apply certain uh, statistical uh, uh, like methods also having um, uh, knowing that where the tendencies are around the central parameters or how the distribution of the parameters are or is there any pattern in the given data if it is numerical likewise. Network formation often happens in a preferential way. It means that when we come on the social network, when we join the social network platform, it's not like that we always are following uh, randomly any other profile we choose according to our interest or prior knowledge. Interpersonal relation analysis hence becomes an important thing to carry out. Now online social dynamics and co-evolution of social beliefs, these all are very much specific to the uh, type of API we are using, that is the application. If it is a Facebook then it has its own challenges and constraints and it will change as we shift to other platforms, other social media platforms. There could be social media buyers also, which we'll see shortly. Now, why there is a popularity of social network these days? It's because it's getting promoted by increasing availability of social data through renowned media domains and also owing to the rapid development in uh, social mining or uh, we can say that it's a big social mining. We ha hear about big data, big mining these days, but since uh, social data has its own challenges and own um, like heterogeneity, so uh, this term comes up big social mining and managing the mind, the process data so that they can be archived in a manner that can be used for future processes. And this type of uh, like social di dialogues, they get triggered by uh, people like us. So we can say that uh, social network is entirely people's network. Wide acceptance of social media also involves the technological advancements that we often see in mobile technology, um, the enriched quality of service that these mobile platforms are giving. It could be uh, Apple mobile or it could be a window phone. Uh, with numerous features that are available at uh, your tip of your finger and you can also access or upgrade or you can even customize the features according to your wish. The internet enabled services are one of the again important cause of uh, expansion of the social media networking coverage. And also needless to say that these days youths are um, having a very general inclination towards uh, these type of technological innovations and social media centric platforms. Also what we found these days is uh, very specific that uh, this, uh, like these type of uh, social media are also becoming a part of the official platforms like the governing officials often they are found to share their official information or some kind of uh, policies being launched or some strategies to be 
uh, planned or policies etc on the official media for example twitter is uh, one of them where we find most of the handles or the profiles of uh, governing officials verified on the platform so that people can easily follow the correct news and um, uh, get the best out of the social media platforms national politics and propagandas plans etc these are also encouraged in the uh, electoral uh, updates also we can see the use of social media a lot for political campaigns etc we can see that um, this incorporates not only a large scale interaction among the uh, people like us but also it helps to boost uh, propagation of ideas among the same mass now what are the challenges that we face the first and the foremost challenge that we encounter is uh, the extraction of data the social data through abis it means that now uh, the data of the social network is being generated but when the data is generated the data is on the real time platform and now we have to uh, extract it and to analyze it how Uh, we have to do this because there are numerous ways we can do it through apis uh, of the particular media platforms or we can do it using third party applications so extraction uh, poses a major challenge then collaborating with the social media platform for having the data is again an important um, thing to do then the collected uh data from the renowned data repositories is again one more important task see when we are collecting the data it could be through apis or it could be through like third party applications that are compatible with the social media platforms or it could be through data repositories so these are the ways in which you can get the data now when we are taking data from the repository we have to keep in mind that these are those data that may be uh, not very significant with respect to today's uh, say event or trend so if that is not a problem then we can go for the repositories there are a number of uh, like authenticated repositories uh, like stanford uh, is also having a very rich data repository for social networks so we can have data from there now the time constraint on the data availability is very important because we know that the social media uh, data is being very fast changing with time it is highly instantaneous and real time so time plays an important constraint so we need to have the freshness of data uh, whether um, say it's on a political discussion or uh, some kind of business policies or uh, maybe a, a kind of say upcoming trend now the request consent to the access of data is important because most of the time uh, the users might not be uh, like uh, allowing the data allowing their own data to be shared so the private and the public social data is a concern so keeping all these things in mind there is a phenomena called big data divide where there is paid versus apis that is whether you are paying to the third party apps to get the data or you are using your programming skills to uh, have the data through application programming interfaces that is apis also uh, it's something like uh, you are um, after you have the data from api or with the, from the third party apps then comes the uh processing part so again when the processing part comes then it is again up to the um, like the developers that they want to build their own tools through programming through core level programming and algorithmic approach or they can also uh, buy tools which are um, like they may be a huge price uh, normally the companies at their part they can buy the tools but if we are doing uh, an individual analysis of data or a small scale uh, like uh, social network teams are there to analyze so it's the best thing is to design and develop their own tools and own uh, through own apis get the data and analyze and uh, generate the reports the reports generated through building of tools becomes much more efficient because that way we can regulate each and every parameter that is supposed to be 
now sharing of social data once the sh data is uh, uh, extracted and pre-processed and everything is done uh, we have to take care of two things that whether this data is to be used right now or it could be made uh, available for reuse in the future also if it is to be reused we can publish the data so that other uh, researchers could use it also the motive and the intent behind sharing the data also uh, is a concern because sometimes the data is available for free and sometimes it is um, available for commercial purpose now the social data buffering the standard types and schemas need to be employed over here there are certain issues while publishing and uh, sharing data so we have to take care of that uh, through what platform we are making the data available and what are the rights obviously the copyrights etc that to buffer the social media in the repositories available online now comes the media analytics there are different ways to manage the large scale big social data we call it media science this involves social recommendation influence information diffusion and also discovering the target audience so recommendation is very clear that uh, what type of people should get connected what uh, business propagations and plans are there and on the basis of that which big business groups could get connected in the future then uh, influence tells you about who are the central users or the central focal points in the social network spotting those users who are actively participating in interaction and analyzing the users those who are actively participating or those who are verified users by that particular uh, social platform etc and diffusion enables you to analyze the outreach of the information being spread we can also unfold the trends that are being uh, currently uh, like promoted or being propagated in both ways then identity resolution community detection link prediction will all study these um, in detail now social recommendation social media as we know is a very uh, vibrant field of research due to its expanse as well as its heterogeneity a large scale and due to the interest of the people which is driving this platform into a huge uh, conversational platform rather now the wealth of the social uh, data is uh, used by the recommender systems or the social recommendation system to address certain issues it could be proposal of new friends request that we often come up uh, when we are using say uh, facebook we often find that uh, some of the friends are being pr proposed to us by facebook itself so how facebook is doing it there is an entire set of algorithmic approach behind that so that we can get connected to more friends or reach more of our friends having similar taste or similar likeness then comes the societal engagement with newly launched products we have seen that sometimes on our mailbox uh, we find that uh, some some advertisements come up even though we are not uh, might not have went to those portals those shopping portals but maybe we have a likeness towards certain products maybe um, uh, some say electronic gadgets or uh, makeup kits etc so uh, we will see that uh, depending upon our inclination to those products the gmail box or any other mail box will give you certain uh, recommendation that uh, these offers are going on that port portal or some better options are available etc so these are also they uh, require a huge social recommendation research on that then comes the official recruitment of employees linkedin is a very uh, fine example of it uh, promotion of news and current affairs that which news is currently being promoted or propagated or what are the current affairs uh, that uh, i might be interested 
So, depending upon my customization uh, on the like the platform that I am using could be Twitter or Facebook, etc. Uh, what type of news uh, should interest me? Recommending them onto my screen also is a work of social recommendation part. Then there could be recommendation of other articles or books of my interest of the uh, users who are interacting uh, their a log of their interaction is being generated actually and in different manner this log is being used uh, after through like a good amount of mining and pre-processing and then forecasting what type of likeness a person might end up with. Now SRS is developed based on the user's views and this could be in form of the text reviews that we often find out uh, when we go to a um, shopping portal or or like say uh, anything that we are trying out new over the online media. Uh, we are also asked to rate or um, there could be like uh, rating in form of some context. On one context I might be rating a particular say for instance a restaurant uh, good on the other context it might not be good. For example, a restaurant uh, might be providing good food facility, so I might be giving 5 stars to that or uh, maybe the delivery service is not good, so I might be ending up with 2 stars only. So contextual uh, analysis is again an important uh, uh, research aspect here and the comparative opinions, how I am feeling about a particular product or a particular restaurant or a garment etc and what other people are uh, finding it. So this type of opinion mining is very uh, like important when it comes to government policy making or having feedbacks on their policies. Now talking about the user influences. Since social media is all about the users how they are interacting with and what they are interacting. So it is important to recognize the nodes in the network as focal point of information transfer. Now when this information or the communication starts and more and more people uh, start to take participation in it, it gradually involves um, a huge amount of data and evolves as a conversational platform. And these conversation uh, it gradually turns out into trend. So finding out key spreaders of who actually triggered a particular piece of information is very relevant and critical to the social interactive networks. This can be done through different ways. Centrality measure is one of them. We can do it on a degree uh, basis like uh, how well a local neighborhood of a node is packed, how uh, it is reachable from other nodes in the network that is how close it to other entities in the network. Then comes the decay. It defines the rate at which the information being propagated are actually reaching the indirected, indirect neighbors. That is whether there is a deterioration, any chance of getting uh, decayed or what type of uh, like things are there. Then there are betweenness that shows that how well positioned a node acts uh, as an information bridge or how good the information is being covered and the ranking is again a popular um, sort of centrality measure that gives you an idea of where a person stands in the community. Now the significance of diffusion. When we are talking about the social media platform where the information they comes from so many sources then it becomes also important equally important actually to find out wh wh which is the origin of the information spread also how far the information has been spread it could be an idea or um, any belief or uh, any product or any propaganda etc to analyze user behavior while the information is being propagated is also important because what type of sentiment with what type of sentiment uh, the people are uh, propagating that piece of information uh, becomes important to evaluate. 
uh, it is also important to emphasize the impact of the constraint and to manage the resource assignment specific to the community as well as to the individual. Because when a, a social dialogue starts, it starts on an individual basis. But as more and more people start participating in it, it turns into a conversation that actually impacts bigger communities as whole. Now defining the stages while uh, information gets diffused in the network is the first thing uh, is the initiation. It means that how the information is triggered, who are the ones who are triggering the information, whether they are internal or the external actors or um, there is some other important resources that are also involved in the initiation process. Second is adoption, the nodes uh, that adopt or accept the diffused idea. It means that when the information had been initiated or triggered by some nodes, it must have reached to other nodes as well, those nodes to which this uh, triggerer is connected to. Now when it reaches to the other nodes, whether they are adopting the information or they are discarding it becomes important because if they are adopting only then the information gets propagated further, otherwise it gets discarded and dropped there only. When it gets propagated, we are also uh, like uh, very important for us to know that how far it has went. So that is the spread part. The nodes here, they act not only as forwarder, but they also act as active participants. So these are the stages. Now coming to the information, how they are being propagated through these stages. The first is information recency, how recent is the information, what are the connected patterns are whether they are homogeneous or heterogeneous, means that uh, whether uh, the same particular type of trend is being followed by those who are uh, getting the information or they are um, reacting to that piece of information in a different way, mostly they are in a different way that is why heterogeneity gets introduced, introduced in the connectivity and communication patterns. So as we can see in the graph that normally owing to the initiation phase we have early adopters, those who are like very eager to adopt and then it scales up in S shaped form um, depending upon what is the rate of uh, adoption, the slope gets uh, steeper or it gets uh, very slant here. And finally, it merges to the upper end, which means that all the people in the network are now having an idea of what is going on in form of content sharing or any new product being launched, etc. So the time of the node creation is uh, like very important to this, this process. Node creation means uh, when this piece of information is getting created and at the same time when this information is actually being injected in the network by some triggerer. So temporal connectivity patterns also are uh, equally uh, like uh, good to go so that we can have uh, an, a deeper analysis of who are the people who actually boosted the trend or um, was a cause of getting it declined. Now uh, there are different uh, aspects here, the user mobility in physical world, the social interactivity, the change of um, similarity in the behavior or the alteration in the hierarchy of the belongingness. All these things define how steeper or slantier this, this uh, S-shaped diffusion graph is to be. Now discovering the target audience. Target audience means the audience who is uh, most likely to be get affected by certain trend or information. So this could be analyzed with the help of the demographics. Uh, it could include the age, that what age group of people are interested in a specific dialogue or the gender, the geolocation part that is maybe it, it, it's uh, of interest to a particular section of people or uh, belonging to a certain region. 
and again the likes and dislikes towards the type of content they consume whether um, it, it it may happen that a particular type of uh, post or um, say uh, some kind of information is getting liked or disliked and upon that also it may evolve as a trend some trend may evolve uh, with a very negative sentimental aspect there are different problems that often confronted on the social media on depending upon what type of uh, balance of emotions are there uh, that we find now comes the real time audience analytics now the real time aspect can be viewed from both the angles it could be user centric or it could be channel centric user centric means it is having a individual perspective of uh, what the current topic of interest is or uh, say what are the online behavior his online behavior uh, uh, his sentimental inclination etc and the second thing is channel centric the types of social media channels uh, uh, are able to attract the users on a particular piece of information or a trend that is being um, say upcoming or uh, continuing or it's targeting the audience in the most popular way now unfolding trends and events identifying and processing the trends the trends are particularly uh, given in form of hash so we can also call the trends as hashtags that uh, is very very prevalent in uh, the social media uh, called twitter so twitter is having an entire science on how to unfold the trends the hashtags uh, instantaneously and also the post analysis when the trends end now the detection of uh, major trends uh, could be done while uh, some conversation is uh, continuing over um, the online media it could be a real time trending analyzing and predicting the evolution of trends in social media now once we are we have analyzed the trend it needs to get managed managed in the sense that we need to design codes uh, to extract and ensure that we have got enough amount of granularity data or we can say that uh, specific to the, to a trend if we want to have the, all sorts of data from everywhere uh, given a particular timeline then we can be able to uh, make a proper mining a proper processing without any biasness because when we have a uh, little data in hand or we are having uh, like uh, improper amount of uh, data or um, not from all the sources it has been collected then we call that uh, the collection is biased so the in that case the uh, report generation and the visualization of results all becomes inaccurate so we need to extract in a manner that every um, bit of the information relative to the trend is being covered now then this is followed by the design of filters to pre process the bulk of raw data then fetch the uh, most widely used hashtags how much they have been used whether they have been used in a uh, like uh, chain of replies or they were introduced as fresh communication then tracking the opinion of big leaders in the society it could be leaders from the entertainment world or from the political world or educational world etc these type of leaders are called media influencers so it's important to track their opinions and again detecting the potential overlapping trends sometimes uh since it's a people's network so uh sometimes uh, say some hashtag xyz is being running or anything like uh, election hashtag election 2019 some would uh, tend to give um, uh the spelling correct or incorrect but maybe it's 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 like elect 2019 will also contribute to the same uh, concept of election or the e could be a smaller case or upper case that is capital or small letter so we have to keep in mind all these things before we are going for the trends so we need a uh, a complete coverage of what type of potential information is on the float 
Now comes the report generation part, identifying the channels and the geographic areas while the conversation is on is quite essential. Now the trend segmentation is another aspect, here the strength of the trend is being analyzed in terms of whether it is an unexpected trend, something all of a sudden happened somewhere and people started uh, propagating it with some hashtag. Now, uh, in the first place, why this hashtag is important? This hashtag is uh, very important because it connects the articles throughout different platforms as well, because it enables a very uh, rapid search when one wants to uh, do a kind of post analysis, then it becomes very easier to extract data with respect to that particular hashtag, which is also called the trend. So, the trend could be unexpected or it could be promoted, promoted by some company or some um, like some business world etc. Or it could be a weak one that it started but uh, it is not that strong enough to hold a region level or a national level or an international level trend. Or it could be an emerging phase or it could be uh, like mainstream uh, or sometimes some trends are like growing or sometimes they are declining. Now analyzing the sentiment that is associated with each of the trends, so that, that is called sentiment mining and how the sentiment is evolving. Maybe when, the, when a particular trend is starting, it could evolve with a positive sentiment and gradually it may catch some neutral sentiment and end up with a negative sentiment. So that depends so, and this uh, needs to be critically analyzed. Then comes the identity resolution. Now since the online social media platforms are huge and they are multiple communities and there are multiple uh, platforms actually. So people are uh, very much inclined towards uh, creating their uh, profiles in a redundant manner. Maybe this type of creation of redundant uh, profiles is intentional or it could be unintentional. Unintentional is something like uh, I, I having maybe uh, two, three profiles and I forgot the password of one and I start creating another. So that is not having any malicious intent, but there could be some fraudulent agents on uh, this type of social media uh, who are uh, intentionally creating uh, multiple identities so that they could be could not be easily tracked. So and this is a very crucial analysis, and um, it involves three stages: the identity searching. And then what we have searched on the basis of profile content and networked uh, parameters that is how they are connected to. Once this is searched, then the searched entities are then linked. Again the linking could be done using syntactic, semantic or crowdsourcing, behavioral analysis or image linking etc. One example I would uh, give over here is uh, image means sometimes uh, maybe someone has created two uh, profiles and both the profiles are having same uh, profile picture. So in that way it gets connected. So these are the different ways in which the linking is done on the searched identities. Identities are the user profiles that exist on the online media. And then comes the end identity merging. Those identities that are found to be linked are merged so that don't, they do not create a redundant effect on the um, social media platforms. So uh, it is very helpful uh, and the identity resolution part is quite uh, uh, like relevant for uh, profile integration that is um, maybe it is floating uh, in multiple versions throughout the social media. It helps to enrich data as well as it is very important from national perspective of security and tracking cyber crime with forensic sciences. Now comes the community detection part. They refer uh, to the identification of those people who are having a high probability of getting connected to each other on the basis of their uh, sharing of content or um, maybe hobbies uh, etc. 
So, it basically allows classification of the online users on the basis of the structural positioning or uh, the sentimental inclination that they share often on a, um, say a particular trend, their behavioral similarity that whenever a particular uh, trend comes into what type of uh, reply or what type of comment or what type of say uh, engagement they are providing their participation, any conversational pattern if they are showing, uh, if they are very similar then they can be uh, incorporated into a single group that is the mutual interest and what type of functionality they are offering to the media. Now here comes the link prediction. This is a fundamental uh, part in computational social science as it helps to identify the relationships in social networks uh, because it is very much dynamic in uh, like relation to the time and also the context. Now, the, predict the prediction of the existence of unobserved links that is the links that are not presently uh, existing but might uh, exist in the near future is uh, achieved through link prediction. It could be done through analyzing the number of common neighbors uh, two entities that are presently not connected might have or the node pairs with high similarity in some context or other. Now, applications of uh, link prediction include uh, the recommendation of friends and followers when it comes to Twitter like networks, uh, forecasting stability of business linkages maybe two big companies are connected they are having a um, good relation at this point of time but maybe in the near future they would not be or vice versa could be the case. So, this is another application suggesting relevant products for the customers that maybe the customer is not uh, friendly with a particular brand uh, but with a particular category. So, they can go for uh, the brand which is promoting the same category of uh, products that the customer could like in the near future. Predicting uh, the uh, clusters of gangsters in the online ter terrorist networks is also a very uh, crucial application that is important from national security perspective and uh, the researchers on a citation network on a social site citation network can use uh, the link prediction information to collaborate with certain people who are having the same field of interest. Now, let us do a case study with the Twitter, but firstly why we have chosen Twitter as our case study because we can see that from 2001 till 2013 data it has been uh, seen that Twitter is achieving a huge popularity in terms of uh, people who are doing research and having uh, Twitter in their uh, tagline or in their title. So, when the peop when people have started doing research it means that it must have become a very uh, important source of information creation and generation as well as sharing. So, we have taken up Twitter for our case study. Now, when, when it comes to Twitter uh, publishing ideas is one aspect. Now, for publishing ideas we can use the public tweeting options that uh, Twitter API provides. Uh, the direct messaging options, the search options and whenever there is some uh, new activity upcoming we get notification as well. So, these all through all these things we somehow contribute our ideas to the online uh, social platform offered by Twitter. Now, once we have done the case study on uh, Twitter with respect to the publication of ideas, we can also see how the connections are being created. So, while connections to be created it requires content to be generated because when whenever there is a content in form of say tweets or quote tweets or replies etcetera, then only people who are in your friendship circle or uh, maybe your follower uh, they would 
intent to share it or like it or retweet it or maybe uh, influenced by your content so much then uh, they could have followed you or tagged you in, in their um, own content etc. So wh when the content is generated it actually um, starts the creation of connections. Sharing boosts those connections that is being created. And we, we explore that who has actually created uh, the particular content. We may um, end up with URL clicks, that the photograph that the user might have uh, given while generating the content. We can interact with that photograph uh, or uh, there could be some media clicks. Media clicks means it could be uh, some video or some GIF or it could be some audio. So when we click, it uh, starts to play. So when we are exploring the content, that is generated by someone else, we are also creating connection. So uh, these are the, some of the ways in which the content uh, creation and generation both are done. Now comes the analysis and interpretation part so that the visualization could be triggered. Profile analysis of the participators who are participating uh, with the say a particular trend or it could be a particular post of some uh, person, some profile. It means that, that it can be done on both ways. Either it could be a profile centric that some person has uh, triggered a set of information and we are particularly interested in that piece of information. Or there could be uh, the case that some trends are being launched and then we want to analyze that who are the participators. It could be a demographic analysis as per the age and gender. Also, we would like to know um, the geographical locations who are participating, the behavioral analysis, the sentiments associated. Uh, are there any bot profiles? Bot profiles means that those um, uh, likes and dislikes and shares that are not organic, that people are not actively actually doing it. It may be the programmers or it could be the robotic scripts who are actually boosting up a particular trend. So all these things are uh, the analytical part that can be carried out with Twitter centric data. Now optimizing outcome, when we have analyzed and visualized uh, and created the reports, now we can uh, apply uh, our uh, certain strategy or uh, we initiate and implement some plans that could rectify or it could uh, give a boost or uh, maybe a better outreach next time when the same social movements are launched. Now this is a case study of uh, Twitter data of our Prime Minister on what are the words he has been frequently using around the time when the Commonwealth game was going. So you can see that the word that was uh, more predominantly used are coming up in uh, bigger font size and boldened. This is another way of showing the same concept using histograms that gives you actual uh, number of times the word has been used. So the tag crowd analysis, this is the tag crowd analysis also called the word cloud and uh, a more specific uh, visualization of this would be the histogram. Now and I, uh, with a uh, like uh, different trends we can also create a geographical uh, location analysis. So on a particular trend this analysis was uh, created with a uh, knowledge of the geographic locations that people are giving in their profile. So from where actually the tweets are coming out and the intensity moves from red to blue, that is uh, this uh, uh, trend is being uh, most actively participated by the Indian users and then uh, it goes in blue towards uh, uh, America, etc. Also, you can see that uh, if you want, uh, we can also uh, notify uh, in the report about how many actual number of tweets are being generated. Then talking about the sentimental analysis, there could be different scales, but the report that is being shown here uh, ranges from uh, 0 to 1. It means that if the sentiment 
associated with each tweet is closer to 0, it means the sentiment is of hate and if it is closer to 1, it is a, a much closer to the positive sentiment. So, likewise you can see uh, uh, an average line which showing the sentiment of the tweets with the particular hashtag. Digital humanities is uh, again uh, a very relevant topic to study in which we can see that uh, how the tools are being built to analyze the uh, people who are engaged in certain uh, dialogues or communities or frequent conversations um, for uh, maybe educational purpose or uh, any other innovation etc. So, this is how it looks like. Uh, as uh, you can see that some of the nodes are uh, like highlighted in bigger uh, size, the bigger circumference of the circle. It means that it is uh, like showing those people who are predominantly uh, connected to each other. So, the ones who having more number of connections, they evolve out as uh, like the bigger circles it, is, it has been shown others are all, uh, shown in a darker color and smaller size. Now, since social media is a vibrant platform, it is used uh, by so many people through so many uh, sources. So, the crimes can also uh, become a very inevitable part of it. The first is identity theft. It is easy to access personal information, uh, so the visibility of user profiles and display of communication and posts, uh, it becomes very easy to get hacked. And how these attacks are being triggered is through URL clicks, application clicks or media clicks, etc. Now why it is important to analyze the cyber crime? It is because that the youths are these days getting engaged with uh, several gaming platforms which might not be uh, quite uh, like encouraging. So, they need to be tracked down. The confidential information that is getting breached should also get tracked down. So, there are different ways in which uh, we can analyze the cyber crime and uh, prevent them in happening. 